welcome everyone. So today on this Exportia Lab, this is our March Exportia Lab. This is a 30 minute session on a specific topic. So this month we don't have any uh, guests, that's just me <laughs> this month. And I'm going to talk to you about selling your technology to Europe without traveling. Right, because it's it's important. We're not we're not allowed. We're allowed to travel, but we're not so much allowed to come back. And I have a European team, but they also are not always allowed to travel um, at the moment, and they haven't been for a year. So I think now we have the proof that selling without traveling and exporting to Europe is possible during a pandemic. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So most of you know me because you're all uh, part of our community, but just in case some of you don't know me in that uh, group, I can see this morning. So I have 20 years of sales experience in Europe and a track record in building multi-million euros um, businesses in Europe for, uh, for and revenue for Australian businesses in Europe uh, and also building their sales teams in, in different geographies in, in Europe. We also manage a lot of distributors on behalf of our customers and with them as a team. This is what we do. We provide, uh, we do business development and we, are, we work seamlessly with your teams. I'm also an author. If you don't have my second book, um, Leo is here on the chat. Send him a chat and say, hey, can I please have a copy and we'll send one to you. Um, it actually won the Australian Best Business uh, Book Award for Sales and Communications in September 2020. So that was great. Uh, Michael, your internet is not working. Don't worry, um, you, you can have the, uh, the recording. Just for the people that don't know me, originally I worked for IBM in, in Paris uh, for six years, managing a key account and 40 million euros for them. Uh, yearly turnover, then I moved to Adelaide where I started Exportia in 2006. And now we're here today to talk about developing sales in the European market in the pandemic while not traveling. Okay, so why are we doing this today? We're doing this because I think it's an important topic because with our team, for example, we've had a record sales uh, this year for Australian uh, SMEs. So that's, it means it's possible. It's possible to grow your revenue even in the current conditions. What we've seen is European corporates as well as SME have switched they don't expect to, to be there face to face anymore. So you can do a lot of online meetings with them. And that's an important, uh, very productive way um, to, to conduct best business. There's also what I found from Australian businesses that have approached us here at the moment in 2021. There's a number of some of your uh, of businesses or some of your colleagues their, their business has stale a little bit during 2020, so now they've got an urge to grow sales in 2021. So that's what we're going to talk about. We know there won't be really a, a, a post-COVID, like there won't be a, a sharp end date to COVID. So it means that things have changed. We have adapted to a new environment that may come back. That's a pandemic environment that may come back. So we just are ready for it. Uh, we've shown, and also building significant export sales is um, you have to do that over the long term. So you can't stop during a pandemic. You just have to keep going, especially important for the European market. Persistence, long term thinking, and keeping at it are really key to your success. And uh, that's why we're here. Okay, our journey ahead. I'm, ahead today we're going to spend 15 minutes on five tips uh, that we have experienced and that we've used and I'm sharing with you today then we'll keep 10 minutes for Q&A okay and then we're done for this morning and you can ask me any question at the end in the Q&A all right so here are my five tips we go we we talk about the target refining your target we talk about how to generate leads uh, while you can't travel. You can't actually go to trade shows or something like that. Uh, we'll talk about how you adapt your sales process to conducting uh, meetings uh, or, or conducting business online. 
And we will also continue to talk about importance of direct access to end users, even if you work with the distributor. Very important. And also we're going to talk about your sales team, the people that are in charge of your sales and how they, they should uh, handle it. Okay, so let's start with tip number one. Have a rethink about your target industries. Uh, and I don't know. Um, so we've done that with a number of our clients. Uh, one of them might be in the room. Uh, he might know what I'm talking about. So basically, you need to focus on target. If you are diversified in terms of your target industries, you need to pick the industries that are recession proof. So we have a client of ours. Uh, their typical target industry for their product is uh, retail garage, right, and workshops. We had to move away from that and focus on um, more the, the road, um, road servicing uh, and on, on different target markets, just because that target industry at the moment is struggling a bit, the retail is struggling, so we had to change our approach. So this is also what you should do. You know, there's a lot of industry that are recession proof. We all need water treatment. We all need healthcare. We need, an, we need to look after our roads. There's still a lot of industries that are still continue to keep going during a pandemic. Um, there's, there are examples of industries I'd like to share with you that have been booming during, during COVID. Uh, as you would know, obviously, uh, personal protective equipment, PPE, uh, but also e-commerce and related industries. We have a, a client in manufacturing. They have a component that goes into conveyor belts. We've had very, very good success with them in Europe because of the boom of e-commerce. Um, there's also, we found there's also opportunities in cybersecurity, for example, where a lot of employees have worked from home and that has created some internet cracks for uh, hackers to come in into big uh, uh, companies, uh, multinationals, internet network and servers and create some issues. So cybersecurity as well is also one of a, a booming, uh, a very uh, in-demand type of offer. So there's a lot of things that you can, so start to rethink about refining your target and you may already have done that, but it's, too, it's good to start from there. See what, what um, target you're gonna focus more on. Okay, how to generate leads without traveling? You know your target profile of companies that are recession proof or that are booming and how you're gonna target them. So I'll, I'll share with you what we've done with our clients and what have, has worked well for us. So first of all, social media advertising using Facebook campaigns, but also Google ads, uh, LinkedIn, Xing is a German LinkedIn. Um, we haven't used it so much, but we've used more, a lot of Facebook with some of our customers. The marketing department have, ha have been very active on Facebook and that has worked quite a lot to, to generate some leads. People have been being at home, Europeans being at home at the moment or working only a few days uh, per week at the office. There's a lot of opportunities for them to actually surf the internet and, uh, and to, to look for information. So it's good time to do that. Um, other things we've done, we've done a lot of webinars like we're doing today. Webinars are easy to set up. We've done a lot of them, uh, even for a few people to test, you know, on a specific topic. We invited large customer base to join and sometimes you're, you're surprised who, who turns up and it's a good way to catch up with some customers you haven't touched base with. So imagine if you've done trade shows in Germany in the last five years, you would have a database of people you can send an invitation for a webinar. You can do that. Email series, also good ways to stay in touch with people. We've constructed some sequences of email to approach new, new persons, but also to keep in touch with some information. So it's very easy to do. First, you, you can, if it's a new contact or a contact you haven't touched base with, you can 
give a theme. The first email is, hey, we haven't been in touch for a long time. I thought I'd share that piece of news about our company. Second email is, hey, this is a publication on what, what we are currently doing. Would you like to set up a time? Third email is on another topic. So you don't make it too close. You can make it every week or every two weeks. That's a nice way to remind them uh, of you. It's soft. One of the things I've done as well, I've tried to set up some meetings, video meetings with some buyers once, and he was like, no, 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 I don't have time for a meeting. I was like, look, that's fine. I'm going to shoot a video for you and explain how our system works. How does that sound? It's like, yeah, great. So I go on my Zoom, I have my product, I'm demonstrating it for that buyer and say, hello, Mr. So that was a German buyer. Guten Morgen. And I'll do my demo. And I say, this is what I wanted to show you live. So if you have any other question, just feel free to reach out. Very, very good. Um, very. So I send him the, the link, link to the Zoom uh, via email and he could watch that video that was really personalized for him. Worked really well. So that's a good Good thing, you should give it a try. It works extremely well. What we've experienced as well is digital congresses. So a lot of our trade shows, traditionally we've done a lot of trade shows for lead generation with amazing results. So now we've moved, all of those big trade shows have moved digital because they kept canceling and the reality is people still want to go to congresses and they're, they're happy to do that from their um, their office or, or from their home, okay? So they're quite cost effective. Have a look in your industry, which are the congresses which have moved online. What's nice is you get GDPR compliant customer lists. So if I'm, what we found is customers log in, register, for the Congress and they give the, the, the permission for the industry partners to actually uh, get access to their details. So it, you may have a smaller list of people, but at least they have accepted that you reach out to them as an industry, as a commercial organization. So it's very, it's very good um, customer list. Invite what I found very powerful, if, if you book a session where you present your product or your solution, it, what works the best is, of course, they can have the salesperson talking, no problem, like I'm doing today, but it works way better. If you have one, even just one, a good customer reference that you can invite along to talk about their experience. I find that has proven to be extremely successful, right? So they're very, very, um, very good value from that, very good feedback from that. Make, they often have online booth as well. So design your online booth with different, with some um, written material, with some videos, make it nice images, make it very, very attractive to, for people to stay. They often have a little attention, you know, they go in between sessions or in between conferences, so they go quickly. So your booth needs to be quite attractive, even if it's in the online world. Um, check options for, for chatting with people that are coming to your booth, to your online booth, but also video meetings. We've done a lot of those video meetings on the chat, uh, discussing with prospective client, it, it is very powerful. Um, and also understand clearly how to book meetings. Can you reach out to the attendees before, before the session? Can you market to them? How can you? What are you gonna get at the end of the digital Congress? Just a list of persons? Are you gonna get some, some do you know, if they have attended your booth, if they visited your booth, have they attend, who are the attendees of your presentation? So there's a lot of, be very clear on the information you're gonna get out of it. Um, so that digital Congress is super great. We had, we've run one in the healthcare sector. We had uh, 500 viewers on, on the demo. So, so that was really excellent. So I, I advise you to do that for sure. To investigate. Of course, good old cold calling. Once you get 
uh, you get a lead coming in through social or for a digital congress or uh, no contact you have, you're trying to reactivate. Good old cold calling, pick up the phone and, uh, and uh, try to set up a demo. Persistence is key. What you have to be aware is some of those in large corporates, especially, they're not all back at the office. They, they may be just a couple of days per week. So make sure you try to grab their, um, set up a Zoom with them or Teams, Teams meeting, or ask for their mobile if you don't have it, because that's very important to stay in touch. Otherwise, you're going to go at reception. Nobody's going to be there and you will struggle to find them. Okay, so... Sitting up Zoom and, and video calls are good for that. All right, moving along, bulletproof your sales process. The sales process that you are usually using might have to change a bit. So lead generation, my advice, based on what we just discussed before, is you do a combination of all of the above. You try to have a, you do your digital marketing, social media advertising, you do your webinars, you do some digital congresses and cold calling as well to close the loop and, and make sure that you secure the web meetings. Um, your demonstration, how are you going to, once you get secure your web meeting, how are you going to demonstrate your product? They need to know what you do. You need to ask them a couple of questions about their situation, what they're doing and so on. But really online, are you going to share your screen? Are you going to have a camera to show your your product working? I'm thinking about you, Denise, are you going to have, you know, kind of a room in your office with your machine that you can demonstrate and talk? Um, are you going to share your screen with an online demonstration? So they, how you make your, make your messages very visual is, is what I'm saying. Um, okay, once you've done the demo and the next step is usually a trial, how are they going to try? Are you shipping them samples with one of our customers? That's what we're doing. We're shipping samples to them. They're trying it for you following up. Do you, did you like that product? What did you think about it? Would you like to buy? Or do you push for a small purchase? That's also um, often the case to be able to um, say, okay, we cannot send samples. Uh, why don't you buy a small purchase? Just a small quantity to start with. We usually we have minimum order quantity, but for this for you to try, we can just make an exemption and send you a small amount. Okay, so it's good to for the offer. That's when it's very convenient to have a distributor uh, to make the offer for you. Selling directly to um, to European corporates is always a bit tricky. So you, you know your distributor then do the quote. It's important that you keep uh, contact with your end users even if you're using a distributor. And that's my tip number four. Tip number four, it's important to keep access to your end users. Okay. So let's it's good to work with distributors. No point about it for small business. It's important. So with the distributors, what additional service can they provide? They're going to be there in the ground for you. So they might provide some technical support after sales service for your end users. Okay. You need to do diligence them at the moment. It's quite important. Some of the distributors in Europe have suffered from COVID a bit. They're a bit wobbly some of them so make sure you have good distributors on 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 board okay so due diligence check them out check that their financial stability is good um renegotiate the terms if you need to um and and monitor your payment okay so that's still important distributors but what's really important is crucial to keep contact with your end users at the end of the day when you have to make sales they are the ones that are buying. They've, they're, they're doing the check, right? You learn, it's, they're the key to your um, long-term success. So onboard them and train them. Check their satisfaction when they use your product. Maintain contact with them. And then if you need, you just change distributor, okay? If your distributor doesn't perform, you change it. Your partner doesn't perform, you, you change it. But it's really key to, to, to really have contact with your key end users. It's a long-term strategy. Uh, 
last tip and then we're going to take some questions so make your sales team like online sales professionals so a few things to consider train them on how to present online so typically you have to be quite dynamic online because this we there is a bit of an online uh, overdose for everyone. So make sure you train them on how to be dynamic. Care for backgrounds, right? They, they, I had a, a very nice um, German client from a very large company. So he was always be in his kitchen. So I have to say it's it doesn't look very professional. So make sure you care for your backgrounds, good quality microphone, Australian made that you can use um, and also extra intranet option. So internet option, I have that little dude, 200 gig just for Christelle, the kids and the partner don't know about it. It's just for my Zooms and for my videos. I'm not sharing my data with anyone. It's my safety net. I can do Zoom anywhere, anytime, okay? Um, train them on online webinars. Train your team to do online webinars. It demultiply your, your coverage, um, not just only one person. And make it dynamic, you know? Get them to team up. Push your slide deck as well to make it attractive and interesting. Um, for your own, your sales team, they might be a bit isolated. Depend. I don't know if some of you have sales team in Europe. Some of them maybe don't. Some of the thing we watch when we set up sales team in Europe and also for a sales team is make sure they're feeling good. Um, there's a lot of mental health issues at the moment because of COVID. People have been isolated for a long time. Europeans are still isolating. So make sure they're comfortable at home and also make sure they buddy up more with colleagues and be there to support them. It is quite important. So let me recap on our five tips and then I'm taking questions. Which target? Refine your target. Refine your target on recession-proof industries that will always be there, whatever happens. But also watch out for the, the booming trends like e-commerce, like healthcare, uh, like uh, um, what did we talk about before? Cybersecurity. So look for also new niche that are booming. Um, generating leads uh, without traveling, digital congresses, webinars, uh, sending video links with personalized messages, email series that are really targeted to a target audience. There's a lot of, and still cold calling. Till it, on the phone is to, to, to really schedule, schedule those web meetings. Um, start to post your question. Um, thank you, Leo, for reminding everyone. Uh, adapt your sales process. Okay, step one, lead generation without traveling. Step two, securing demos. How are you going to demo? Step three, the initial trial, especially most of us here today are on B2B. So that's really, uh, really important to have those steps. And then how are we going to get the sale going with a local partner? Importance of direct access to end users. Keep direct access with your end users. It's very important. Distribution can be a bit wobbly at the moment. So make, make sure that, um, that, you are going to, um, that you are going to do that. Uh, make your sales team online sales professional is my third, is my fifth tip. Uh, making sure that... Uh, that everyone looks like uh, looks like professionals online when they represent your business. Okay, so we've got the first question from Ben. Thank you for that. How to overcome the language barrier? We only speak English. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, using these tools for penetration uh, in USA and Canada, but EU. Um, okay, so for the language barrier, if you really don't have anyone speaking uh, any, uh, any European language, um, I think you, as you grow yourselves, you're going to have to have people in your team that are speaking uh, different languages because you, you can only do so much with English for the rest of the European markets. It also depends. I mean, if, if you're only focusing on the UK and you, you know that this is a key market, fine. Start by this market, but do it well 
and then go to other markets. But the reality is if you really want to tackle at the German market or the French market or the Spanish market, you will need some people who speak the language because it will go faster for you. You will build trust much faster. But I'll give you a few tricks. When, um, when, you, when you have, uh, for example, um, when you create an email series, you create your email series, get it translated. Get it translated, get a brochure translated, uh, and and start to have a bit of a, of a, of a play with that. So that's one way. Um, the other way is, well, you you know that you need to have your user manual in in the language of the country where that you're targeting. So um, that has to be done. I assume you already know that. You already know that. But really, yeah, get some support uh, with the languages is my, if you really want to push, push the sale further, start with, um, we've even done videos uh, in different languages and sometimes our client, they have, for example, an Australian referee or testimonial on a video, they just do the subtitles in, in French, in Italian, in German. And it's an Australian client talking about their experience. Just do that. Um, don't forget your finance in order to talk with your bank, finance providers, or export finance Australia. Okay, so that's Adam uh, from EFIC, full disclosure. And they propose options to finance um, when you have transactions uh, that, that may, uh, that are quite interesting export transaction, but that might put your uh, business into financial stress temporarily. So Adam is, is, is there and he's happy to assist He's on the chat to everyone. Um, I then around your question about are these tools for penetration in USA and you and uh, Canada, but EU. I'm focusing on the European market because this is what we do. I assume you can use a lot of that as well in the US and in Canada, but I'm not an expert. I can only talk for Europe. Uh, if that was your question, I hope it's, it's um, responding to your question. Anyone else uh, for a question? Do we have in the Q&A, I see we have Matt, thank you. Are there any specific tools aside on Zoom that have been helpful for you? For example, uh, Bonjoro looks nice for personalized videos. Wow, no, I don't know that. I don't know Bonjoro, I'm gonna have a look. So we've used uh, to, uh, Teams, of course. We've used, um, of course, Zoom. We're Zooming, Zooming, Zooming. Uh, Webex, we've used um, in crisis mode in the healthcare sectors. I've even used FaceTime with doctors that were really busy, didn't have good network. So you can do a lot of things. For the videos, um, I know some a lot of people do different things. Um, they use, so we use a Zoom uh, transcribe option to transcribe our recording into text. For example, um, just trying to think what else we've used. Really, the platform of the digital congresses with online chats and video chats and video meetings with new prospective clients are really amazing. And they're working on it. They, they really, the organizers of large European treasures are learning as well as they develop. So there's good opportunities there. Uh, so Matt, I hope I answered your question. We have uh, one minute and we're closing. This is the 30 minute lab. So tell me everyone, I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you found it useful. Um, let me give you a challenge before you go, okay? So in one of those, uh, so let me give you a challenge. In one of those, what we've discussed and some of the tips, just pick one. Pick one and start implementing it. There might be something you haven't implemented. So just, Pick one and implement it. This is my tip for you. And I think this is a great, um, imagine that you could reach an amazing record sales in 2021. So now you know how you can do that. 
Okay, so just implement and go online and seek some for some support. Uh, then if you want to have a separate conversation as well, happy to, to set up a time. I have, if you guys don't have, um, hi Sanjay, sorry you came late. <laughs> good to see you anyway. Uh, good to see you, Denise. Uh, good to see you, everyone. Um, look, you can have access to the recording. Feel free to reach out. We, you know where to find us. We'll have a next lab in April. Uh, still working out what the topic will be. We're waiting for confirmation of a desk of a guest. Uh, I would like to all thank you for your time, and I'm I'm glad that you don't have so much Zoom overdose, and that's why I keep it sharp and sh and short. So I'm I'm staying one more minute if you guys have more question, and then we are going to close it. Thank you so much, everyone. You take care. Look after yourselves. <laughs>